What's going on, everybody? It's your boy Mel, and welcome back to Mel Got Game. Thank you guys for tuning in. Go ahead and like, comment, and subscribe, and let's go ahead and get into the video. Rookies, man. Rookies, rookies, rookies. We love them, don't we? Every year we get to watch the future of the league put their talents on full display for the very first time in their professional career. And there's no rookie position that's more special than that of quarterback. Now, regardless if you think quarterback is the hardest position or not, nobody can argue that it is the position that has the most pressure to perform at a high level. And there's no quarterback that has more pressure on him than a rookie. Now, some draft classes have more talent than others, of course, and some drafts are more quarterback heavy based. But this year, I think there's no doubt that there is some generational talent at quarterback. Now, the rookie quarterbacks that we know for sure are going to see the field this year is Carolina Panthers, Bryce Young, Houston Texans, CJ Stroud, and Indianapolis Colts, Anthony Richardson. Now, I will throw an honorable mention in here and include Will Levis as well. Now, while we're not 100% sure that Levis will see the field this year, the way the Titans quarterback room is looking, I just got to think that the coaching staff for the Titans is going to want to get a look at Levis at some point in the season to see what he can do. Now, each of the quarterbacks I just mentioned really has the potential and the raw talent to really have some productive rookie seasons. And before we can predict what the outcome of their seasons will be, let's go ahead and familiarize ourselves with each rookie quarterback. First, we got the 5'10", 2021 Heisman Trophy winner out of Alabama, Bryce Young. Young was taken first overall by the Panthers after the Panthers. Well, the Panthers gave up basically everything to get Bryce Young. They traded away their original first round pick, which was the ninth pick, as well as several other picks as well. The biggest piece, however, they traded away was their star receiver, DJ Moore, who now joins third year quarterback in Chicago, Justin Fields. As far as Bryce Young is concerned, however, he's getting thrown into a Panthers team that's kind of in the midst of a really young rebuild. As they spent the past couple of seasons trading away their veteran players for draft picks and younger players. And Bryce Young himself is at the center of that rebuild with the Panthers hoping that they have drafted their franchise quarterback for years to come. Now Bryce Young has one of the most impressive college resumes we've seen from a quarterback as his two dominant seasons at Alabama quickly propelled him to being atop the FBS. His junior year which was his last year at Alabama he posted 3,328 yards, 32 touchdowns, five interceptions, and four rushing touchdowns. And his sophomore season would prove to be his best as he posted 40 4,872 yards, 47 touchdowns, 7 interceptions, and 3 touchdowns on the ground. His 163.2 passer rating proves just how efficient he was at throwing the ball in the most competitive conference in college football. And it goes without saying that the Panthers definitely hope that he can continue this efficiency in the pros as they look to claw their way back to the playoffs. As they haven't had a season over 500 since 2017. And with the NFC South being in a state where it's pretty much any team's division right now, Bryce Young has the unique opportunity to potentially lead this Panthers team to their first division title since 2015. Which also happens to be the year they went 15-1 and and made their second Super Bowl appearance in franchise history. Now in training camp, Bryce Young has had some highs and some lows. He's shown some really impressive flashes in the red zone as last Tuesday the Panthers had a heavy red zone practice and Bryce Young went three out of four on touchdowns. Reporters said that he fit the ball into some tough spots and had only one incompletion which was a drop by Spencer Brown. Now some of his struggles have been with decision making as he threw an interception in four straight practices this past week. A lot of his throws were where he struggled with tight placement balls on the sideline or in tight coverage. Obviously as a rookie there's going to be some growing pains and that's easily going to be the case with Young. And me personally as far as my prediction goes for Young I think he will have the worst rookie season out of the starting quarterbacks. Now the Bryce Young fanatics please do not all jump on me at once I didn't say he was going to have a bad year but in terms of overall production I do think Stroud and Richardson will both outperform him. I just think the position that the Panthers are in right now they're not exactly setting Bryce Young up for success right away and I think it'll take a year or two for him to get really comfortable behind that Panthers O-line and for this season I think he'll throw for 3,100 yards, 19 touchdowns and 11 interceptions along with three touchdowns on the ground. Next going in order of the draft we got CJ Stroud who was drafted to the Houston Texans out of Ohio State. Much like Young, Stroud is being thrown into a team that is going through a rebuild and frankly, the Texans have been rebuilding for quite some time. I mean, even with the Texans being the youngest organization in the NFL having their inaugural season in 2002, they've only had six playoff appearances in their 20 year history, which is not that good. But by drafting Stroud, they're hoping that he can be the start of this turnaround that they need to take command of the AFC South. 
Now, Stroud himself had a very productive college career as well, passing for over 40 touchdowns in both his sophomore and junior year, with only six interceptions in both years. And with 187.2 combined passer rating, Stroud propelled himself to being a top draft prospect and kind of created this Bryce Young versus CJ Stroud narrative on who would get drafted first. And in my opinion, what really made Stroud sought after as an early draft pick was his performance in the Peach Bowl on a national stage against UGA, where he had 348 yards and four touchdowns despite the loss. And I imagine when the Texans saw this performance, they was rubbing their hands together like Birdman. And with the Texans' last playoff appearance coming in 2019, they are definitely hoping that CJ Stroud can lead them back to the playoffs in this new decade. As far as training camp goes, reports are largely positive for Stroud as they're pretty much saying that he's living up to the hype of his number two overall status. He's been pushing the ball down the field and making some tough throws as well as showing off his athleticism in the pocket. However, he has shown that he can struggle with reading some NFL level coverages as he threw two interceptions last Monday, including one pick six. Even though he hasn't done anything too flashy and made some really big plays, he also showed that he has discipline and can learn from his mistakes. And while I don't think that the Texans will make the playoffs this season, I do think that Stroud will have a solid season that he can build upon in year two. And I think he'll throw for 2,900 yards, 21 touchdowns, and 13 interceptions and have five rushing touchdowns. Now we have Anthony Richardson, who was drafted out of Florida to the Indianapolis Colts. And finally, they have gotten out of this senior citizen quarterback carousel that they've been in since Andrew Luck retired. With their last four quarterbacks being Jacoby Brissett, Phillip Rivers, Carson Wentz, and Matt Ryan. Now they finally have a young athletic signal caller who can do a multitude of things on the field. While Richardson didn't have the college career our previous two quarterbacks had, he still showed his dual threat ability and most importantly, his insane arm strength. He saw some action in his sophomore year, but his junior year is really where he showed what he can do. Throwing for 2,549 yards, 17 touchdowns, and 9 interceptions. While also wreaking havoc with his legs with 654 yards rushing and 9 rushing touchdowns. Now that alone really wasn't enough to make him a high first round option. But his combine performance helped propel him to that early first round selection as he was ranked as the most athletic quarterback in NFL history according to the RES metric. And he joined Cam Newton and Dante Culpepper as the only quarterbacks ever to have a perfect RAS score. And in training camp, he's been mostly torched in the defense, throwing the casual 60 plus yard completion down the sideline. He's had some bumps on the road, however, like in day five, where he went five and 12 overall on his throws when he was taking reps with the first team. However, the coach coaching staff has been praising his decision making for when nothing seems open. He's been making the smart play to throw the ball away out of anybody's reach instead of forcing it into tough coverage. As the game slows down for him a little bit more, I think he'll learn how to fit the ball into these tight coverage windows in the pros. Overall, I see Richardson taking sort of this Lamar Jackson arc where there's going to be questions about his accuracy and decision making in his rookie year. But he has every chance at his disposal to silence the doubters and really have a productive season. Especially if the coach can figure out what's going on with this whole Jonathan Taylor situation because if they can get their star running back to play, that's definitely going to alleviate a lot of the weight from Richardson and I think it's going to lead to a more stress-free rookie season. But for my prediction for Richardson, I have him throwing for 2,900 yards, 17 touchdowns, 10 interceptions and also having over 500 yards on the ground and 10 rushing touchdowns. Finally on the list we have the forgotten child out of the bunch Will Levis. Now for Levis this season there isn't a whole lot to predict just because the Titans have already openly came out and said that Tannehill is going to start week one. But we know that this is definitely subject to change as the season ages. With Tannehill on the decline in the latter stages of his career he could easily underperform and be benched later in the season for Levis. But like I said time will tell if that becomes a reality. Now Levis himself had a rocky start to his college career as he attended Penn State for the first three years but really didn't get no playing time in those three years. He found his place in Kentucky where he threw for 2,826 yards, 24 touchdowns, and 13 interceptions in 2021 along with nine rushing touchdowns. His production would decrease a little bit in 2022 however he was more efficient than he was the year prior with 2,406 yards, 19 touchdowns, and 10 interceptions. With the Titans taking a chance on Levis at the start of the second round many thought that this would kind of pan out to be similar to drafting Malik Willis a year ago. However, it seems that Levis has been all about business so far as he's been thriving in Titans training camp per reports. With head coach Mike Vrabel praising his red zone decision making and accuracy. Last Monday, he threw for five red zone touchdowns and displayed great accuracy. As it seems that Levis is for sure playing with that chip on his shoulder from the draft. And I think it's going to be interesting to see this quarterback battle play out this year for the Titans. But if we do end up seeing Levis, I think it'll be later in this season. I think the Titans are going to try to ride out Tannehill as long as they can. And if Tannehill shows any signs of decline, I think Levis will probably have about four or five games 
at his disposal this season. And in those games, I think Levis will throw for about 800 yards, three touchdowns, and two interceptions. Well, guys, that is my prediction for each of our four rookie quarterbacks this season. Let me know what you think of my predictions and comment below what are your own predictions for the rookie quarterbacks this year. I'm very excited to watch them take the field this year, and I know y'all are too. I think we were blessed with some really good talent this year in the draft, and you can just tell that the league is in good hands for years to come. But guys, that is it for today's video. Don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe if you guys did enjoy. Thank you once again for tuning into my channel. I hope you guys have a great rest of your day. It's been your boy Mel, and I'm out. Peace. I hate having long eyelashes, bro. Like, I hate it. Every time, every day, one of them just decides to attack me at any random point in the day, and there's nothing I can do about it. It just gotta blink away. <laughs> and for this season, I think he'll throw for 3,100 touchdowns, 19, 3,100 touchdowns? What did I just say? He camera shy, he don't wanna be in the video. Say hey, say hey, you wanna come in here and try to bother me, say hey. This is my dog. His name's King. He's a pain, but I love him. Okay. You little old. You little old man. You little old man, ain't you? Yeah. You little old man. <laughs> Mwah. I love you. Okay. Go eat or something. Go do something. I'm recording. Why are your paws wet? What have you been doing? See, this is why I can't touch him.